Welcome to Electron Online, and here's our last video in this series where we try to look at the periodic variation for different kinds of properties of atoms. And in this case, we're going to take a look at the paramagnetic property of atoms and ions. Paramag par phew, that's a hard word to say. Paramagnetism, or paramagnetic atoms and ions, uh, are such that they have at least one unpaired electron in one or more orbitals. So whenever you have a situation when there's a single electron in an orbital, like you have here for potassium in the 4s orbital, or for scandium in the 3d orbital and so forth, then you find that the atom is subject to outside magnetic fields and will react, therefore, in a certain way. So whenever we put a magnetic field onto an atom, which has a paramagnetic property, such as an electron that is uh, a single electron in an orbital, there will be an interaction between the, mag the magnetic field of the single electron in the orbital and the magnetic field from outside sources. And that interaction can sometimes be measured if you do it properly. So, we have to understand which of the atoms and ions are paramagnetic. Well, there's actually a lot of them. Most of them are. For example, potassium has only one of its 4s orbitals one uh, only has one electron in its 4s orbital as opposed to calcium which has two and therefore that is not param paramagnetic where this one is. Notice that most of the metals like scandium, titanium, vanadium, chromium and manganese only have one electron in their 3d orbitals and so therefore all of them are paramagnetic. When we move on to uh, with iron, cobalt, nickel and copper you can see that those four are also paramagnetic even though copper has all of its 3D orbitals filled, it turns out that it stole one of the electrons from the 4S orbital to do so, so this is still not filled and therefore copper is slightly paramagnetic. But when we get to zinc, all of its 3D orbitals and its 4S orbital is filled, so therefore there's no unpaired electrons and uh, therefore there's no paramagnetism associated with zinc. Um, and you can see then, of course, for many, many of the elements in the periodic table, you'll have a condition where there's paramagnetism and therefore they would be subject and would react in some way to an outside magnetic field. Anyway, there you go. That's what we mean by paramagnetism. And now you have, with this video and the other 22 from this series, you have a pretty good idea how we have all kinds of per uh, periodic properties to the atoms on the periodic table. There you go.